It's a film review Monday of Locked On Cougars. We're talking about the good, the bad, and the ugly from BYU's 38-31 to victory over the Arkansas Razorbacks. Cougars off to a 3-0 start. We'll talk about all that is entailed in that statement. We'll also talk about the weekend that was in BYU sports. Folks, Puka Nakua is an NFL record holder. We'll explain all of that ahead on today's show. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team, every day. What's up, everybody? I'm Jay Catch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, your resident BYU insider. Thank you for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. And thank you to all of you who are everydayers with us right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. By way of introduction, this is your only, or not your only, your original daily podcast focused on all things BYU sports. And a huge thank you to all of you for your support of the podcast. Today's show is brought to you by our good friends over at FanDuel. This episode is brought to you by the FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers, you bet $5 and get up to $200 back in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started and get that uh, going. All right, let's dive right in on today's show. BYU is 3-0 and on the season in case you were living under a rock and showing up to today's podcast, not knowing how the weekend went for BYU football. But they got a thrilling 38-31 to victory over the Arkansas Razorbacks. If you want a more kind of immediate reaction to the postcast edition, uh, the early Sunday morning, technically, when I finally sat down and recorded it, uh, talking about my initial takeaways from the game. What we do on Mondays during the football season, we call them Film Review Mondays right here on the podcast. What it is is on Sunday afternoons after I uh, get done with my church meetings and the like, I sit down, put my kids down for a nap, and then I sit down, pull out my iPad, and I scroll through the game and watch literally every single play BYU has played in the green, the game on the Saturday. Saturday before, and I just go through it again. Essentially, it's just a it's a recap, a rewatch of the game, and I get to write down all my notes. And I've got a ton of notes from today. So let's start dive right in. First things first. Let's talk about the defensive backfield right off the top. Now, the very first play of the game, you probably saw it. Uh, Crew Wakely uh, comes up and he makes a very very fine tackle on KJ Jefferson. The problem was Crew Wakely was the man who took the most of the abuse from that collision, taking it looked like a, a knee or a, a thigh to the side of the head, and he was out for the rest of the game. After getting his first career start for the BYU Cougars at safety, unfortunate to see his day ended so soon. They said on the radio they was being evaluated for a head injury, and obviously I saw him on in street clothes later on in this game. The hope is that if it is concussion-like symptoms, he'll be able to get back on the field in short order. But the other thing is, is BYU's main safety contingent in this game. Malik Moore came in in relief of crew Wakely, but then took an awful angle on that 55 yard touchdown run for Arkansas, which by the way, rewatching that tape, if you don't follow me on, on Twitter, I put out a, a screenshot. What an incredible job blocking by Arkansas on that play. They blocked everything up perfectly. And then Malik Moore as the deep safety for BYU took an absolutely horrific angle. And it was off to the races at that point. And they scored that touchdown, AJ green right down the sideline, 55 yards to the house. Uh, we didn't see much of Malik Moore after that. I don't know if it was injury. I don't know if it was performance related, but after that, essentially BYU went the distance in this game with just two safeties, though being Tanner wall and uh, Ethan Slade. Now, Ethan Slade was the guy who was slated, uh, uh, slated, I should say, had to start alongside Malik Moore going into the season after the back-to-back injuries to both Micah Harper as well as Talon Alfrey. But it looks like Tanner Wall, folks, has made a very, very strong impression. He was very solid in this game. I was very impressed uh, by his play. And it's uh, it's crazy to think that BYU, their top four safeties in this game, speaking of Crew Wakely, Tanner Wall, and Ethan Slade, were or still are walk-ons with the BYU football program. Malik Moore is the only non-walk-on safety that saw any playing time that I recognized uh, in my film evaluation. It's it's both concerning and also awesome at the same time. It's like, okay, where are the scholarship guys for BYU? Now, you have two of them on the shelf. We know that. Michael Harper with the ACL injury, then the shoulder injury uh, to uh, Talon Alfrey have, have those two on the shelf. But 
Uh, the hope is that guys like Greater Demuni will continue to uh, work, obviously, in in practice and hopefully earn some more playing time. But at the same time, if walk-ons are proven to be the best options, Jay Hill is not going to hesitate to put them on the field. Uh, other things I took away from this. Rewatching Parker Kingston's touchdown pass, that trick play touchdown pass for BYU. I talked about it in my pregame show on the KSL Sports. I'm going to do a Cougar pregame show every BYU game day on that. And I'm, I'm priv- privileged enough to co-host that program. And I also kind of mentioned it on the podcast last week leading up to it is BYU was going to open up more of the playbook now that they were facing off against the better competition. That meant more of, they call them specials, those trick plays. They get specific downs and distances and specific points on the field, and they are unafraid. Speaking of Aaron Roderick, Kalani Sitake, and the brain trust that leads BYU football to pull those out and utilize them, and they used one to absolutely incredible success with Parker Kingston. Parker Kingston's got a good arm. He was a high school quarterback for Roy High School. I had a chance to call a couple of his games during his high school days. It's not the most polished arm, but it's good enough when you have a wide open Deion Smith to deliver a good ball downfield and score a touchdown. What a setup on that play. Incredible misdirection by BYU's offense. Isaac Rex runs off the safety and Deion Smith sneaks out of the backfield on that wheel route. What a play design. What a touchdown for the Cougars. Uh, I also really liked BYU's uh, D-line uh, gap integrity in this game. It's actually been a very, very positive sign for BYU so far through three games this year. The defensive line for BYU, and th- what I mean by gap integrity, is on any, any given play, those defensive linemen have what they call a gap. There's a, an assignment they are supposed to uh, hold up and essentially plug a hole uh, when it comes to the opposing offensive line. BYU has been very very solid by and large in that gap integrity. Now that very first touchdown for Arkansas really was the one play that they really kind of got washed down on and got out of their gaps. And that's when they got a hit with that touchdown run. The rest of the game, BYU's defensive line, I thought had maybe their best game of the season to date. They were very, very good, particularly BYU's defensive ends. We'll talk more about them here in just a moment. Um, other things, uh, I'm going kind of just literally note by note as I wrote these down. Wide receivers, uh, they need to be tougher. They they were having issues getting separation from Arkansas DBs, and that's that's going to be a season long issue. If this is going to be an issue against Arkansas, you can guarantee other teams are going to have just as good, maybe in potentially better defensive backs. BYU's got to do better at creating separation with the route running coming in and out of their breaks, and more importantly, when you have those balls that are not perfectly thrown, there there were plenty of them that were not perfectly thrown, but were catchable balls you gotta catch them Aaron Roderick will tell you that under Norm Chow back in the 1990s if a wide receiver touched the football they were expected to catch it it's been a uh, just a it's been a hallmark of BYU's uh history with the offenses that they've had if you can put your hand on the football you're expected to catch it now Isaac Rex I have this in my next note what an incredible catch he had. You know, the one that uh, Isaac, that was fired at him by Keaton Slovis. He corrals with the one hand and just kind of tempers it a little bit and then hauls it in to get BYU in a scoring position. What an incredible play that was. Uh, let's see. Oh, other thing about that. Still too many drops. Like I said, BYU's wide receivers, if you touch that football, no matter if it's fired low, behind you, if it's in the general vicinity, show off your catch radius. NFL teams want to see wide receivers that can make catches, even if it's not a perfectly thrown football. That's something that Keaton Slovis, he's not been perfect. But trust me, there have been many uh, misfires from him this season, but uh, they need to be better. Speaking of the wide receivers, they got to bail him out at times. That is something you would like to see more of. Uh, I'll just jump down to the note on the Chase Roberts touchdown catch. What an incredible one-handed effort. I thought lifetime. I thought, oh, that's an incomplete pass because Keaton Slovis absolutely fired a missile into that corner of that end zone. But Chase Roberts showing everything he's got at six foot four or whatever he is to go up, haul it in with one hand, get it against his body, cradle it against his shoulder pads and absorb the contact with the ground. What an incredible touchdown. There's no doubt that that was the number one play on Saturday when it came to ESPN's top 10. What an incredible effort. Uh, the thing about this is I'm not surprised by Chase Roberts being able to do that. This is a kid. I don't know how many people remember this. During his high school days when he was being a recruited athlete, he went to, uh, they called him Nike Spark Combines back in the day. I don't think Nike does these anymore, where you can go and do like essentially an NFL Combine type deal for high school athletes, and they test your numbers, and they had like these uh, measurements in terms of points. You'd stack all the points together. And Chase Roberts, after he went and participated, if I recall, it was in Ohio. He set the Nike Spark Combine record for the entire country. He set just all kinds of uh, numbers that were absolutely insane. And almost immediately, I'm telling you, the week after the Spark Combine wrapped up, he was getting offers from the likes of Ohio State, USC, Michigan. It was just insane to see the offers roll in. He stuck with BYU, who I think he had previously committed to. And 
obviously BYU's benefiting because he was absolutely lights out in that game. So I haven't even really touched the surface of all of these different notes I've got. So I uh, will continue to plow through these, get to as many of them as we can in the allotted time remaining on today's show. But before we do that, let's talk about our friends over at BetterHelp. Now, today's show is brought to you by BetterHelp. What it is is BetterHelp is here to help you guys out. If you're ever trying to figure out what you're doing and you have questions or you have doubts, whatever it might be, uh, if there is any question in your mind as to if you need some help, well, BetterHelp might be able to help you guys out in that circumstance. Do you ever find that you're just trying to fall asleep, your brain suddenly won't stop talking, or do your thoughts start racing right before better at other inopportune moments? That is part of what BetterHelp can help you guys out with. It's helpful for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries, getting therapy from our friends at BetterHelp. It also empowers you to be the best version of yourself. We all want to be the best we possibly can be. And it isn't just for those who have experienced major trauma, et cetera. You don't have to have gone through a life-changing or traumatic event to have to have therapy. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try, my friends. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and most importantly, suited to your schedule. They'll work on your time. Just fill out a brief questionnaire and get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge via our friends at BetterHelp. Uh, get a break from your thoughts with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on college today to get $10, uh, not $10, 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, B-E-T-T-E-R, -E man, I'm screwing this up. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P.com slash Locked On College. Today's show is also brought to you by our friends over at UCCU. We've been working with UCCU for months now, my friends. They're one of our great local sponsors. They have a new uh, feature to their uh, banking app that pays your entire family to learn about money. Kids look to parents to become financially letter. And of course, us as parents, I'm speaking for myself, we don't always know the right answers. Learn and Earn breaks down financial topics into fun, bite-sized educational games like quizzes and trivia. Every time a family member completes one of those topics, they earn points that accrue and can be redeemed for gift cards to stores like Amazon, Apple, Sephora, Walmart, Nike, and many, many more. There's age-appropriate content for every member of the family. You all can compete against one another and track your progress on leaderboards. Uh, more importantly, it's available inside the UCCU mobile banking app, so play it anytime, anywhere, and the more you play, the more you learn, and the more you learn, the more you earn. It's simple as that. Learn and Earn, part of UCCU's award-winning Be Money Smart Youth Banking Program, helping kids, teens, and parents have fun while becoming more financially literate together. It's all courtesy of your friends over at UCCU. Love where you bank. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars a part of your day. Thank you for being everydayers with us right here on the podcast. Quick reminder that coming up on Friday, we have our new feature every Friday here on the Locked On uh, YouTube uh, channel, Locked On College channel, I should say. We have what we call Locked On College Football Kickoff Live each Friday morning. It's 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Time. That's 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. here along the Wasatch Front on Mountain Time. They cover everything when it comes to the college football realm. Had a great piece on BYU and Arkansas leading into that game. Obviously, BYU getting the win, so if you want to check it out, it's available on every YouTube channel that has a college uh, show on it, and that includes Locked On Cougars, uh, 9 to 11 a.m. Mountain Time on Friday mornings. All right, let's dive right back into the mailbag here. Uh, not the mailbag, the, the, the uh, film review. Okay, so other notes. Uh, LJ Martin. His touchdown run, absolutely insane blocking. Kingsley Suamatia showed off an incredible job by him with his block to really spring LJ Martin. LJ Martin was patient enough to let Kingsley get in front of him, just that extra tick to get that block set up, and it was off to the races. Also got to give a tip of the cap to both Keelan Marion and Darius Lasseter, who were placed side on that play and got downfield and threw incredible blocks as well on the 45-yard touchdown run. Defensive uh, backs hate when a good wide receiver can throw a block like that. And BYU's uh, wide receivers have been doing some really, really impressive blocking this season. So it, it's really good to see that. Uh, I thought BYU's offensive line took another step forward in this game. It was not perfect by any means after that 45-yard touchdown run. I think it was about, about two yards per average uh, per carry for LJ Martin. So some tough sledding in the, the run game for BYU. But that's one of the best defensive fronts BYU is going to see all year. That uh, Trajan Jeff coat, all the guys along that defensive front for Arkansas were very, very good and very, very physical. I, I thought BYU's offensive line had their moments. Uh, and at the same time, late in the game, some of you thought BYU went conservative with the play calling. I think BYU was just simply saying, you know what? O-line, LJ Martin, go end this football game. Chew up all the clock you can. And credit to Arkansas's defensive line. They held up against BYU. When it felt like at times, BYU's O-line was just, it was like almost like it felt like just one simple push away from really taking control. 
just were unable to do so. But I did do think they took a step forward. Interesting, after the first series of the second half, uh, Braden Kime came in at right tackle and never went back out of the game. Kaylee BTN was benched at that point. Uh, I am interested to get some uh, some clarification on that, hopefully from Kalani Satake during his uh, media availability today. We'll be sure to ask about that. But uh, ETN had his moments in the first half, also had some very, very uh, not – Good moments at right tackle for BYU, but after a, what felt like was a subpar first series in that second half, BYU did not hesitate, lifted him from the game, and then in went uh, Braden Kime. Was it injury related? Was it performance related? Similar to Malik Moore. We'll hopefully get some more clarification on that, but at the same time, uh, knowing how Kalani operates, I don't expect much, honestly, in terms of uh, forthcoming comments. We'll see what happens. Uh, interested to see on that front. Um, also, BYU, their defensive line, what an incredible close to this game they had. Now, Arkansas had both of their starting tackles leave this game due to injury, and they had to kind of mix up the lineup and put different guys at different positions. Number 62, Latham, who was their uh, team captain, had three or four holding calls in this game, had an awful false start on that fourth and one late in the contest as well that uh, necessitated Arkansas punting the ball away to BYU. The the decisions and the, the mistakes that the Arkansas offensive line made were un forgivable in many respects. It's just not good. I can understand why Arkansas fans would be irate with that, but BYU's defensive line late in this game, they were getting pressure with three and four man alignments. If that is legitimately what BYU's defensive line is capable of, this BYU defense has had an incredible turnaround. Think about this. For three or four years now, we have been begging, pleading, hoping, praying, uh, doing whatever to, with the hope that BYU could get home with four-man alignments and three-man alignments. That drop three, uh, sorry, the rush three, drop eight scheme for BYU really laid it on three defensive linemen to get pressure. And BYU started to do that late in this game. That was a phenomenal development for BYU. If that's legitimately something they can do game in and game out, this is a defense that is going to be even better than any of us could have expected this season. Now, like I said, it's a small sample size, but late in that game, they were, it was withering. I guess is the best way to say it. They made life miserable for KJ Jefferson and the Arkansas Razorbacks. It was awesome to see Tyler Batty, Blake Mangelson, Isaiah Banya. Uh, who else was in there? Um, uh, geez, uh, Michael Daly came in at points. It was, it was awesome. Uh, John Nelson, I think even at one point I saw him on the edge at one point. It's awesome to see these guys getting after it. And I really like how BYU shaking things up. John Nelson, who's more of a pass rush type defensive tackle on obvious passing downs. They're inserting him into the lineup and taking off one of the bigger defensive tackles in this alignment. It's just smart football from Jay Hill. It, it, it's, it's awesome to see him uh, adjusting literally play to play. We're putting the nickel on in the circumstance, bring a linebacker out and put uh, uh, Eddie Heckard or Camden Garrett back on the field. They're literally making changes in game to best give them the opportunity to succeed as a defense. And it's awesome. It, it's, just, it's fun to see Jay Hill is doing exactly what BYU fans have been hoping for for years. So it's awesome to see that being taken, uh, being that step being taken forward. It was the best game for BYU's defensive ends this season. There's absolutely no doubt in my mind. They were awesome. I felt like holding up in run scheme. Obviously, getting after the quarterback, uh, multiple sacks in this game. Uh, the strip sack, by the way, I got to give credit. Uh, Eddie Heckard, what an incredible nickel blitz call that was as he came around the edge, completely had the uh, running back whiff on him, comes up from behind KJ Jefferson and strips that ball off, and Tyler Batty just dives on it. What an incredible play call. What incredible execution of that play. And what an incredible single man effort from Eddie Heckard. He also had that great open field tackle late in this game. Eddie Heckard has been everything BYU could have hoped for and more. He said on this very podcast that he came to BYU because NFL talent evaluators told him, hey, go make the jump to a higher level and prove you can play at that level. You did that on, on SEC turf. That is going to be a game. And Eddie Heckard had a pass interference in this game. It happens to the best of cornerbacks, obviously. But he's going to be able to point to this game against Arkansas and say, that's an SEC team. And I was absolutely dominant in that game. NFL talent evaluators are going to love the fact that this kid's skill set has translated from being an FCS All-American to a very steady Power 5 starter, team captain, and obviously just downright star in this game against Arkansas. It was awesome. 
awesome to see. Uh, other things I liked, uh, BYU, in terms of the overall ability to cash in on turnovers, BYU remains one of the best teams in terms of if you give the ball up to BYU, they're going to make you pay for it. The touchdown to Parker Kingston that he caught that screen pass on, it was blocked up to perfection. Yet again, more misdirection for BYU. They toss it out there. Kingsley Suomata'ia was out there, literally had nobody to block because Mata Avata'ase, as well as Isaac Rex, had blocked the two defensive guys in the screen. You can go to my uh, Twitter feed once again, Jacob C. Hatch, and just see the opening of the Red Sea, quote unquote, there. Parker Kingston's thinking, I got all this green grass. Let's go do this thing. And he runs in for a touchdown. Incredible play. Other things it was good to see. It was good to see Logan Latui back on the field for BYU. If I recall correctly, he suffered an ACL tear in the Oregon loss last year, very early on in the season. Might have been a short, right around that same time frame. But he's been out since then. So it's a positive to see him back a year later, and he was contributing for BYU. That's a positive sign that coming right off of an ACL tear, he's not lost a step, quote unquote, and he's been able to uh, work himself into the scheme. The best thing at working for him is he obviously is playing for his former coach in Jay Hill, who uh, coached him at Weber State before he transferred to BYU last year. But really, really like that. And then the sequence, the final thing I'm going to talk about here. I know two other things I need to talk about here. Actually, I got like four or five. Okay, you know what? Let's just roll through these. Uh, how about the sequence? And our good friend Jimmy on, on Twitter pointed out, he actually sent me a text about it. It says, how about the slowest scramble for a first down, then throws a, an absolute dime of a pass to Keelan Marion. They have a run to LJ Martin. They got stuffed for a little bit. And then the incredible touchdown pass to uh, Chase Roberts. What an incredible sequence that was for BYU. This is a team that's got grit. They got fight. They just never quit. I absolutely love the way the BYU executes. It, didn't, it was not an easy game for them by any means offensively but they got the job done in critical moments when they needed to. This is a team that rallied from a 14 and a 10 point deficit in this game. Fantastic stuff from the Cougars. Also, Dominique McKenzie, you want to know the measure of respect when you are a gunner on punt team? It's when they double team you. Arkansas refused to let Mark, uh, not Marcus, uh, uh, yeah, Mar was it, uh, no, it was Marcus McKenzie. Yeah, uh, they refused to let him get loose on punt coverage. They literally double teamed him. So what did they do for BYU? Jacob Boren stepped up and became an ace gunner for BYU on their punt return. Now, obviously that first punt return is unforgivable, but later in the game, BYU was very, very uh, sound in their coverage on that. So positive to see that adjustment in game. Uh, and then also uh, the, 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 the the plays late in this game by Max Tooley. He makes that interception. He goes and makes an incredible uh, a sack in this game. Max Tooley had one of his finest performances in a BYU uniform. I think he got underrated a little bit in this game, but Sam Pittman, Arkansas head coach, in his comments leading up to the game in his weekly press conference, said, I love the Tooley kid. And for good reason, he probably was even more impressed with what Tooley did against Arkansas in that game. Maybe not, but really Really fun stuff to see that. A couple other notes is that the illegal touching uh, on Isaac Rex is the third straight game it's happened. Uh, I looked at the film, and Chase Roberts is lined up on the line of scrimmage. He just needs to take, take a step back, establish himself off the offensive line, and negated a 30-yard pickup and actually really killed BYU's drive in that circumstance. You cannot continue to have this happen. I don't know who to blame it on right now. This one, I think it's on Chase Roberts because Isaac Rex is an inline tight end. He's all attached to the offensive line. He's not going to come detached and back himself up. He is doing exactly what he's supposed to be doing. In that circumstance, that's Chase Roberts that needs to back off the line. Does uh, do, do they have a coach watch that? I don't know. I think these players are smart enough to figure it out on their own, but they've got to figure that out. Other things. Uh, BYU had a chance to recover a fumble and obviously get an interception by Jacob Robinson on that final drive for Arkansas would have uh, killed this game and salted it away. You got to come away with those. This one got a little too uh, close uh, for comfort because of the inability to get both of those things. But the good news was, Yet again, BYU found a way to win a game, and they just went absolutely nuts uh, with that last play. What an incredible pass rush it was. Tyler Batty coming off one edge. Uh, I think it was a Mangelson or Isaiah Banyo off the other. Really fun to see the defensive ends collapse that Arkansas offensive line. And I, I really think that uh, K.J. Jefferson was down before he tossed that pass, which was illegal uh, touching and forward progression by an offensive lineman. But nonetheless, uh, BYU gets a huge win. And I think I got through all of my notes there. So obviously a positive. Oh, one other thing, uh, a little bit of a negative. BYU cannot continue to have illegal formations on punt. Get your guys up on the line of scrimmage. Don't have them backed off the offensive line. It's kind of the opposite of the illegal touching for BYU. 
IU with Isaac Rex. Got to have guys actually on the line in punt coverage. Get them up there. Get them lined up. I think it's a pretty simple fix, but to have that happen twice in the game, both uh, in the first half and the second half, you got to clean that up. But uh, yeah, it just really was, uh, I think, a solid win for BYU. Uh, like I said, it, it was a good win to go to SEC country and do it. Uh, they hadn't won in SEC land since 2019 in that thrilling double overtime win against Tennessee. But a crazy, crazy outcome for the Cougars who are now 3-0. and And oh, by the way, they are receiving, they got three votes in the uh, AP poll and one vote in the coaches poll. So a little measure of respect for BYU. Not, not exactly everything you want quite yet, but hey, if you go to uh, Kansas this week, who by the way, BYU opened up, it was a, I saw eight or eight and a half point uh, underdog dog to start it got down to as low as seven points has gone back up to eight uh, as of recording of this podcast so sitting right around a touchdown and plus favorite for arkansas in this game i know byu they absolutely relish being the underdog and obviously big 12 play starts this week and we'll talk more about that on tomorrow's podcast we'll also get to our big 12 power poll on tomorrow's show as well. So stay tuned for all that. Uh, we're going to finish up today's show with the notes on the weekend that was it for BYU sports and also some former Cougars in the pro. One in particular, Puka Nakua, folks, is setting NFL records, and it's absolutely insane to think about. He's only two games into his pro career, and what an, uh, an incredible showing he's had so far. We'll get to all that as we continue on right here on Locked On Cougars. Now, a quick word on our friends over at Athletic Brewing. Now, you're probably wondering, okay, what in the world is Athletic Brewing – Jake. Well, it is a new feature here on the podcast and they have each week. They have their new game changer of the week brought to you by the athletic brewing company, much like, and I'm going to give the nod this week to Eddie Heckard. Athletic brewing has completely changed the non-alcoholic beer game. They make non-alcoholic beers that actually taste good. And why I picked Eddie Heckard was because he was just absolutely all over the field for BYU. He plays outside in terms of a traditional cornerback route, uh, not route a uh, position, then goes and plays the nickel back, came off the edge, got that Strip sack, had that fantastic open field tackle, had really, really solid coverage across the field for BYU against Arkansas. He really did change the game, and that's what our friends at Athletic Brewing are doing here. They have changed the non-alcoholic beer game once again. They make non-alcoholic beers that actually taste good. They have full flavor. They're well-crafted, just like a full-strength beer. But more importantly, there is no hangover ever. Their brews are great tasting and award-winning, and they have beat out full-strength beers in global competitions. They have over 50 styles of craft non-alcoholic beer, including IPAs, Goldens, Sours, and many, many more. So if you want to give them a shot, my friends, you also can check out their limited edition experimental styles that add to the variety as well. Go to Athletic Brewing's uh, non-alcoholic brews and find them in your local store or go online and order them today. First time customers can use the promo code locked on and get 15% off your order. That's L O C K O D L O C K E D O N at checkout at athleticbrewing.com for 15% off. That's Athletic Brewing Company fit for all times. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars a part of your routine, everybody. Hope you have a fantastic Monday. Uh, quickly running out of today, uh, running out of time on today's show. We try and keep these shows uh, under thirty minutes. But a couple of notes before we go on today's show is a tough loss. If you did not see it over the weekend, BYU women's soccer, the number one ranked team in the country, went to Logan and lost one nothing to the Utah State Aggies. That is a gut punch loss, a frankly stunning result for BYU and their women's soccer program. Uh, they are likely to drop from the top spot in the national polls as a result of that loss, and we'll see where they ultimately tumble to. I would guess it probably doesn't drop them out of the top five, but uh, we'll see what happens on that part. Uh, the good news is BYU women's volleyball. They had an incredible showing at Utah State in their own right up in Logan. Uh, the 12th ranked Cougars uh, just absolutely were dominant in a win over Utah State, winning it uh, three sets to none, a sweep of the Aggies. 25-20, 25-22, 25-23, and Erin Livingston, who continues to be BYU's probably best single player this year, was absolutely dominant in that showing. It was awesome to see her doing her thing, and obviously a big win for BYU women's volleyball. Uh, BYU women's soccer, by the not women's soccer, women's golf is in action this morning. They are at the Leadership in Golf Invitational up at the University of Washington, if you want to uh, keep an eye on that. Also, men's golf is at the Bearcat Invitational, host, uh, being hosted by the Cincinnati Bearcats out in Cincinnati. So uh, both golf programs kicking off their fall seasons this morning. Uh, it's 8 a.m. for those of you maybe tuned in later on in the day, uh, but it's an 8 a.m. start for both of those tournaments up in uh, Seattle for the women's golf team and also so Cincinnati for the men's golf team. So congratulations to them. And also, folks, Puka Nakua is an NFL record holder. This is absolutely incredible to see because Puka Nakua has now uh, collected, is it 26 receptions in his first uh, two career games? 
for the Los Angeles Rams. And the crazy thing about this was I didn't see this until it popped up on social media. So I'm not trying to uh, say that I knew this for anything because I, I really didn't. But he has set an NFL record for the most receptions by any player in NFL history in their first two career games. It's absolutely nuts. He's the first player in NFL history to have 10 receptions and 100 receiving yards in each of his first two, two career games as well. The numbers for this kid are absolutely insane. I'm not sure that you could have picked a better start to a player's career than what Puka Nakua is doing right now for the Los Angeles Rams. Uh, you can tell that Sean McVay absolutely loves this kid. Uh, it's, it's awesome to see him doing his thing. And you know what? Puka is a guy that BYU fans will forever remember because of what he did for the Cougars. It's just unfortunate he never stayed fully healthy for BYU uh, when it comes uh, to being on the field for an entire season for the Cougars. But nonetheless, Awesome to see him doing his thing, uh, obviously, on Sundays there for the Los Angeles Rams. The Rams did lose to the San Francisco 49ers. Fred Warner and the Niners uh, getting the win in that one. Uh, by the way, Fred had nine tackles, nine total tackles in the win. Continues to be, be uh, maybe the best linebacker in the NFL. Folks, the whole storyline that BYU can't put guys in the NFL is completely null and void. Uh, they're actually putting absolute legitimate stars, superstars into the NFL these days. And I, I hope that BYU, I guarantee they're already doing it. I hope they continue to sell this on the recruiting trail and absolutely make sure that every guy that they're recruiting right now say, look at all these guys, what they're doing in the NFL. There's no reason that you can't do that very thing if you come play for BYU and obviously will get you to that level. So awesome. Awesome stuff. Congratulations to Puka Nakua. It's awesome to have another NFL record holder who is a, an alumnus, an, an illustrious alumnus of Brigham Young University. And congratulations to Puka on his incredible start uh, to his NFL career. All right. That's going to do it for this Monday edition of the show. Comments, concerns, questions, whatever you got, please send them in. By the way, I want to give a quick shout out to a couple of guys. Uh, I had a chance to golf last week with a good friend of the podcast, Wolf. He's been listening to the podcast and watching it for a while now. Had a great round of golf with him last week. So, Wolf, big shout out to you. Uh, Jordan Huey, I had a Huey, I believe is how you pronounce it correctly. Uh, he was down at Arkansas. Got, he was good friends with my buddy Bryce Peterson. They were both down there in uh, Fayetteville for the game. So, Jordan, uh, thanks for tuning into the show. Funny to make that connection between you and Bryce, who was an old roommate of mine. Uh, uh, during our days at BYU and also uh, a shout out to Tom Sorber, uh, an old friend of mine, old family friend, a kid I grew up uh, down the street from quite literally in Orem, Utah. He said he's been listening to the podcast for months now. It's just, it, it, it warms my heart that you guys really enjoy this podcast as much as you do. So thank you for all your support. Once again, thank you for making it your first listen of the day. Thank you to all of you, once again, who are everydayers with us here on the podcast. And you know what? As always, as I find him saying, uh, make sure you join us again tomorrow right here. Unlocked on Cougars. See ya.